I'm Professor Ariza. I teach constitutional law and administrative law here at Brooklyn Law School. My specialties are equal protection law and the law of free speech. I absolutely love the act of exposing my students to the concepts in constitutional law. I absolutely love watching them struggle with those issues, discussing the issues both in class and out of class. And I'm absolutely delighted when I see that light bulb go off over their heads, when either they realize the answer or more likely, when they realize that there is no one answer, but there are a series of arguments that one can make. It's a very empowering moment for students when they realize how uh, powerful a tool law can be and how powerful a tool it can be to make legal argumentation in a sophisticated, accurate way. That is a joy, and that's why I teach. I think every legal scholar finds his or her research agenda based on the circumstances of what's going on in the world when she starts writing. For me, my inspiration was a series of cases the court decided on gay rights issues in the late 20th and early 21st century, cases that focused on a doctrine called animus, um, a doctrine that was highly under-theorized, but really very deeply resonant of what matters at a fundamental level for the Constitution's guarantee of equal protection of the laws. It was those cases that led me to begin thinking about the concept of animus, and that eventually led me to write my book, Animus, A Short Introduction to Bias in the Law. Animus uh, is really an attempt to explain the doctrine that the Supreme Court provided in a series of cases where it relied on the idea that so-called animus is an illegitimate motivation for government action. Those cases, those opinions, were deeply resonant, but at the same time, not particularly well explained by the court. It was my goal in writing the book to take the vague, incomplete statements that the court made in these cases and to translate them into a workable doctrine of constitutional law. As a scholarly book, I expected that it would get some level of interest in the scholarly community, but it, the book seems to have hit a nerve in the larger popular culture. And what's interesting about all that is that this idea that government cannot act because of animus-based motivations is really one that I think Americans intuitively understand and want to learn more about. One of my most rewarding experiences with a student in recent years actually centered around the animus book. I suggested to her that she think about how the animus idea that was developed at the Supreme Court in a series of gay rights cases was being applied across the country in lower courts. She went off, did an enormous amount of research, and wrote just an excellent, wonderful paper. It was a great experience for her. The research that she did was frankly quite useful for me. And this, I think, was a, just one example of the many things that happen here every day where students and professors act in a very interactive way, a very cooperative way, a way that helps the student, a way that helps the faculty member as well, as together we learn about the law.